My name is Ben Bishop. I'm a comic book artist, self-publisher, illustrator, comic creator. I do my own books, self-publishing a lot through Kickstarter, my book The Aggregate, um, and then more recently I've been doing a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff um, with Kevin Eastman himself. Um, we actually just did this book here, Drawing Blood, um, which we also self-published, kind of going back to the self-publishing roots that Kevin started out with. You know, I've been drawing since I was four. I've always wanted to draw comics. I started making my own comics, stapling together. I wrote to Marvel when I was 11 in 1997, asking for a job. And they wrote me back and said, you know, get older and get better and keep in touch. And then I tried to go to school for it, couldn't go to school, couldn't afford it. And so that's when I started self-publishing when I was 18. I um, started work on my first book, Nathan the Caveman. Um, and that came out 10 years ago. This is the 10 year anniversary of my first book, 300 page graphic novel. And so that led to the next thing, led to the next thing and just been going since then. I've always had my own characters and ideas and stories and comics, unlike animation or toy design is something that you can do all on your own to get those stories out and um, so that people can read them and see them. Because comics you can write, illustrate, self-publish, one man team kind of thing. Um, so it's good to be able to you know, tell the stories that I have inside of me that are kind of driving me nuts to get out there into the world. And, uh, yeah, and I've always wanted to have my own characters that would influence and inspire other people later, like the Turtles or the X-Men or Spider-Man did for me as a kid. It's actually Rhode Island Comic Con, I think two years ago, you came down to my table and you were like, hey, Kevin just had a panel and he said that you draw turtles better than him. And I was like, what? I've never even met that guy before. And, and that's not true. Um, but of course, then I started tweeting about it and saying, ha ha. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but anyway, what ended up happening after that was I started getting more turtle work with covers and things like that through IDW. And then hand in hand, I did my creator own book, The Aggregate. And um, there are a few copies of The Aggregate over at IDW in San Diego, like on the coffee table there. And I was trying to get in touch with Kevin to get a quote for the back about whether or not he liked the book. And he never did get me the quote, but about a year or so after that, I got an email um, one night. I was out at a bar during a convention. I got an email that said, hey, Ben, Kevin Eastman here. I just read the aggregate. It's effing awesome. What are you doing for the next year? I'd love you to do a book for me. And I was like, what? So I really only met the guy once, and it was that Rhode Island Comic Con. And then about a year later, he wanted me to be the artist of this story that he wanted to tell, which is the, I say it's the fictional true story of how the turtles were created, but instead of Shane Bookman, or instead of Kevin Eastman, it's Shane Bookman, and instead of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's the radically rearranged Ronin Ragdolls, so, so it's definitely a really fun story to tell, um, and again, going back to self-publishing for Kevin, I think, I think he saw a lot of you know what he used to love about self-publishing and what I was doing with the aggregate and stuff like that so it's been awesome people are like how often do you talk with him I'm like too much he's texting me all the time but can't complain and he wants me to get to work right away on the next one um, but we just finished drawing blood and then we jumped right over to this big Raphael story it's like a 46 page story um, called Target R and it's basically Raphael but Weapon X so like Raph at his craziest and, and most angry. His eyes actually turn red, he's so angry. So, and that comes out December 19th through IDW. I was in the military and uh, I worked on aircraft and we had a bunch of fiberglass stuff left over and uh, I wanted to make something out of it. So I said, well, do a Casey Jones mask so I can have everybody I ever meet that has anything to do with Ninja Turtles sign it. And uh, that's pretty much what has happened for the past five, six years now, so. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I gotta make another one soon. <laughs> And so it's pretty wild that I was influenced by Turtles and inspired by Turtles and inspired by people like Kevin. And now to work with him and to work on those properties, it's a real bucket list kind of thing. And um, what IDW is doing with the Turtles is great too because they give all the different artists and writers their, their kind of voice on the series and they can you know, change stuff around and make the Turtles their own. And then it comes on to the next artist and they do the same thing. And so, so Kevin and I really made the Target R story our own. We, gave Raph red eyes, and took off his mask, and we changed Casey's mask, and, um, and I put him back in the sweatpants with the holes in them, tried to grunge it up and make it a little bit more like it used to be when Kevin first created Casey and um, Raph with Peter. So it's gonna be fun. A lot of artists start out trying to 
find a style or, or mimic a style or something like that. And what I found was that you should just learn how to draw and then the same way that everyone has a, a certain type of handwriting, I feel like the style just happens. And then it comes to a point, once you know how to draw almost anything as well as you can, like from the top of your head, like you're gonna inherently just start drawing a certain way. You can't chase a certain style and you should never chase a certain style that is like hot or popular because it always changes. Uh, and that's one of the things that's so good about comics is that like every single comic can look wildly different. Some people make comics with photos and collages, and, but it's still comics. And so the Turtles is similar where it's like, it's one of the, not one of the only, but one of the few properties where they can look wildly different, like from Jim Lawson's Turtles to Kevin Eastman's Turtles to Peter Laird's Turtles, like they're all so unique, um, but people still know it's the Turtles. And so for me, it was about finding my favorite version. And I think for my Turtles, they're kind of somewhere between the IDW series, that Mateo Santaluco style, and the Jim Henson suits. Because uh, I think the Jim Henson suits are the best versions of the Turtles. <laughs> I want my books to like kind of have some lasting power and, and stories that people still care about. Um, Nathan the Caveman, like I said, I did 10 years ago, and I just actually did a Kickstarter for the 10 year anniversary edition. And, and it went up to uh, 15,000 bucks. So that was really heart felt for me because it showed me that like people still care and the book still lasts. And I have this great fan base that wants to read anything that I put out um, as long as it's not bad. And, and I haven't made anything that they think is bad yet. So that's nice. Uh, so, so lasting power, again, characters and stories that inspire or people want to pick up and read again. Um, that's what's cool about the aggregate is it's the world's first split decision comics. It's like an old choose your own adventure book, which forces people to read it again and again and again in different ways. Um, so, yeah, just characters that last, stories that last, um, and then kind of making a mark similar to what Kevin and Peter did. I mean, even a fraction of that, just some kind of ongoing franchise that would wind up on t-shirts and lunch boxes and stuff. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs>